Hey there, this is Mike and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. I've said this many times on here. The reason I fell in love with Neville Goddard's teaching is that for me, he explains things so simply. He says, if you want to change your life, well, assume the feeling of the new you, the new state, and continue feeling that new state until it's objectified in your life. And he says that I can tell the state I'm in by observing what I'm feeling throughout my day, what my thoughts are focusing on, and how I'm reacting to things. In his book, Prayer, the Art of Believing, Neville calls it the law of reversibility. If a certain state produces a particular feeling, then the reverse is true. A feeling, if sustained, will objectify the state that would have produced that particular feeling. The Bible says the exact same thing in Mark eleven twenty four: Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it, and you will. Notice the change in tense there. Believe you already have it, and it will appear. You will be it. Feeling is the secret, Neville says. Capture the feeling of a state and let that state become your dwelling place. Here's a quote from his lecture, Catch the Mood. Now, the state of consciousness to which you most constantly return is the place you really dwell, that habitual state from which you view the world. Do you view it from poverty, saying, I am poor? Do you walk the street feeling how poor I am? You are then viewing the world from a state of poverty. Am I viewing the world from the state of one who is completely unknown and unwanted? Well, that's my home. The place to which I habitually return constitutes my dwelling place. I conceive a state that, if it were true, that would make all my wishes come true. I go into that state. Now, the first time I enter the state and view the world from it, it is wonderful. But I may never re-enter that state. Therefore, it's not my home. I want to make that state my perpetual home. So I automatically dwell in that state. And if I dwell in it so that automatically I'm in that state, it becomes my dwelling place. It's habitual. It's so normal to keep returning to the old state. It's what we're used to. For me, I had to break the habit, not trying to fight the old state, but by changing my self-concept. I had plenty of frustration and freak out moments when things weren't changing. It's because I entered the state, but I never returned to it. I hadn't truly made it my home, my dwelling place. I hadn't changed my self-concept. I'd start my day with imagining my wish fulfilled and then go on about my day. And I didn't really pay much attention to my state of mind, what I was thinking and feeling, until things built up to a point of boiling over with worry and doubt. Then I would do my best to get back into the state of that particular wish fulfilled and then try to go on with the rest of my day. Then I reread Neville's lecture, Trust in God, and it hit me. Here's a quote from it. Scripture tells us to love God because he first loved us and that we should imitate him as a dear child. How is this done? By falling in love. Whether your desire be for wealth, fame, health, or marriage, you must fall in love with the state. Hmm. Fall in love with it. To me, that meant become so consumed with it that it doesn't matter what the facts say. This is what is mine. Kind of like when I first met my wife. I fell in love with her the day I met her. She felt the same, totally. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> she came around, though. I proposed just a little over two months after I met her. And I heard all the reasons why it wasn't smart. You hardly know her. It's too soon. You're not even out of college. On and on. But I was so madly in love with her, so consumed with it, that what was prudent and rational just didn't matter to me. Now, 
I want to take a moment to point out that I didn't tell Kim what I was thinking. I didn't say, now listen, I'm going to marry you, and whether you like it or not, you're going to love me. <laughs> no, that would have sent her packing very quickly away. It was all within me. Now, I didn't know anything about Neville at this point. I just knew I loved her. And regardless of what the facts and what my friends told me, she was the one for me. There have been times in, over the last several years when I had so many things going on, what you might call big things happening all at once that I just couldn't imagine for every little thing successfully trying to uh, maintain a state, <laughs> the state of the wish fulfilled for every little thing separately. I was making it so much more difficult. And then I remembered Neville's stories about a couple of different women who just lived in the feeling of something wonderful is happening to me right now. And some wonderful things happened to those ladies. I tried that specifically, you know, something wonderful is happening to me right now. And it just didn't feel real to me, especially when I tried doing it as I went to sleep. I would get so worked up, you know, something wonderful is happening to me right now. Well, I don't want to get all worked up in excitement trying to go to sleep at night. And I couldn't fall asleep. My heart started pounding in excitement, but it, it petered off. By the time I was actually dozing off, I was back into my old state of fear and doubt and worry. So I started thinking, what is something, a state that I can actually feel real and fall madly in love with? Something that encompasses it all, a new me, a new core state. Success with a little bit of pride or satisfaction in knowing that I am the one cause, that I did it in my imagination. I knew what success meant to me. When I felt success, I had already defined what it meant for me. Ah, oh, success. Now that feels really good. I can feel that. And that's what worked for me. Find that feeling. Find the feeling that feels the most natural to you. Don't listen to anybody online uh, or me. <laughs> that, and don't take what they say. Well, they say I need to feel this, or they say I need to use this word. Don't be stupid. Don't use that word. <laughs> Let them be them. This is all you. What is most natural to you? What feels the best to you? Besides the word, the collection of letters don't mean anything. It's the feeling. It's the meaning you give those words. What does it mean to you? Sit with it for a few moments. Relish in that feeling. Fall in love with that feeling so much so that you want to stay in it all the time. You have no more desire to remain in the feeling of lack. Your desire to enjoy the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the new state, is greater than your habit of lack. You'll notice quickly when you're dropping back into the old way of thinking. You'll feel it in your body, too. You might even think, wow, I never noticed how crappy this old state made me feel. <laughs> That's great when you notice it. Find that wonderful feeling of success or whatever you want to feel and feel it often throughout your day. Feel it as you drift off to sleep. Become intoxicated by the feeling. Let it become the feeling you feel habitually. You might think it's hard to actively entertain those feelings throughout the day. But if I let that love come up, the love for this new me, this new state, just come up naturally and feel that love. Mm. If you really want it, if you really fall in love with it, it will not be a chore. It will not be difficult. How hard is it for you to rerun the old stories? It came pretty easily for me. Oh, it, look at the last time this happened. I've disappointed Kim in the past. I've been a failure for my kids in the past. I've been horrible with money. <laughs> I 
how much effort do you have to put into jumping on social media, getting lost for maybe hours a day in everyone else's stories? Remember when you fell in love? Maybe it's been a while. <laughs> Think back to the time you met that person, that wonderful feeling of falling in love. You wanted to spend as much time with them as possible. And when you weren't with them, you were thinking about them and enjoying all the good feels when you do think about them. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't matter how your day is going because you're in love. It doesn't matter how much of an a-hole your boss might be. Mm. You're in love. <laughs> Fall in love with the feeling of your new state. The state in which all these things are yours. And feeling is the secret. Neville says, don't question how it can be done. Simply feel that you have it. Assume the attitude of mind that would be yours if you were already in possession of it so that you feel that it's done. Feeling is the secret of creation. I'm not talking about trying to just say only positive things. I'm not saying you have to maintain some sickly sweet pie in the sky attitude all the time. You'll still run the gamut of moods, but the state you most often return to, the one you habitually return to, is your dwelling place. That's the one that sticks. That's you, the new you. Neville says it isn't an emotional thing. It's the feeling of acceptance that it's done. But if you're truly thinking from the wish fulfilled, living in the end, seeing and reacting to the world from the new state, your emotions will be different, your emotional responses to things. Some of the same things, your emotional response, your reaction to certain events from the old state are going to be vastly different than your responses from this new state because you're seeing the world from this new perspective. Make it big. How would you feel knowing that all of your desires were fulfilled? How does it feel to be highly valued and in demand? How does it feel to be loved? How would you feel knowing the whole world reshapes itself according to your state? Knowing that all things are possible for the one who believes, believes to the point of knowing. The more you commune with your own heart, the inner you, you wake it up. And things really start to unfold in ways you never thought life could be. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do, not at all, certainly not how to feel. Just encouraging you to unleash yourself from all of your self-imposed expectations and wisdom of the world and fall unabashedly in love with your new state. Feel it. Love it. Let it consume all other states of lack. Do it now and do it later. Do it often. <laughs> As you're going about your day, feel the buzz, the delightful feeling of your success. I love you. I'm feeling twisty.